Hi, I'm Jim Walker. Welcome to my continuing series on pattern carpet. Before we get started, I want to remind you, please click on the link below and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Today will be the first episode of estimating pattern carpets. Before I get started, I must say again, by this time in the process, the designer or the salesperson must have discussed with the client pattern matches increase required yardage. Many a job has been lost because the client thought they knew or was told how much material was needed, but that number increased because of a pattern match. Once the customer or designer has decided on a pattern, it's time to bring the estimator into the process. Often, the installer will also be the estimator. If not, we recommend that the installer be included in this process to avoid future issues. Before the estimator ever visits the job site, they must become familiar with the carpet to be installed. They must be provided with a sample of the manufacturer's merchandise to get all of the specifications, such as pattern repeat, or if the merchandise is tufted, woven, printed, and the manufacturer's installation guidelines. If the manufacturer's sample is not available, one must be ordered, or a store sample of the carpet large enough to show a full pattern repeat must be available for the estimator to review. If a blueprint is not available, the estimator should request one. Whether he has a provided blueprint or not, he must visit the job site. This is to verify any changes from the blueprint or any job site conditions, such as floor prep due to unacceptable concrete or scheduling conflicts with other trades. Without a complete understanding of the pattern match, an estimator cannot figure the job correctly. Pattern matches must be included in the cut list. For residential patterns, often one estimator is sufficient. However, for more complicated residential jobs and most commercial jobs, we suggest at least two estimators. Any mistake in this part of the process guarantees a failure, and it will be costly. Beyond math skills, an estimator's equipment should include a clipboard similar to this. Also, notice the graph paper. On most jobs, this will be quarter-inch scale, but on real big commercial jobs, it might be eighth inch. The estimator will need a measuring device, such as a 50 or 100 foot steel tape measure, or a laser device like this. We never recommend a cloth tape measure because they stretch. We always use mechanical pencils because they erase easily. We made our own hand rulers and we furnished them to the salespeople from the stores that we worked with. Not only were these great marketing tools for us, but on the back, we printed a yardage chart. This made it so much easier for salespeople to determine square yardage. Locate your starting point, which will usually be the main common area, such as the hotel lobby or a central hallway. Your measurements should radiate out from that place. If different patterns, colors, or other flooring products are being used in different areas, these must be highlighted on your diagram. Any special pattern requirements must be noted on your diagram. For more information about this, watch tomorrow's video for an example from our past job at Hall's Crown Center Hotel. If a representative is available in your walkthrough, discuss with them or the GC special items such as, but not limited to, doorway transitions, work hours, space and time conflicts with other trades, on-site secured storage space, dock access, elevator access, trash disposal, 24-hour contact information, and anything else that you think you need to solve problems. Don't forget to cover moving furniture. If you're in a public space, this might include oversized display furniture. If you're in an office space, special attention and cost always apply to moving cubicles, disconnecting and reconnecting electronic equipment, and day-to-day -day desktop materials such as paper, pens, pencils, and staplers. The desktop should be clean, but we know that doesn't happen. Once you're finished measuring, we recommend leaving that job site. This is never the right time to discuss the amount of yardage or pricing with customers or their representatives. Back at your shop, figure your yardage and make your cut list plus pattern matches. Number your areas and list everything clearly. Check and double check everything. 
In our office, we always had two people go over the bid just to make sure we got it right. Our reputation was always on the line. In the next videos, I will show you how to figure pattern match for different patterns. This will include large and small geometrics, small and large florals, and a few wild cards from my 50 years experience. Also as a bonus, I'm going to do a walkthrough of a real estimation of a real law firm with real issues that either can make or break your profits. I'll see you then. And don't forget to click the link below to subscribe to my YouTube channel.